Hey, this is Donnie Smith. In this video, I'm gonna show you a new tool. Well, it's not a new tool, but it's new to me. Now, I've used this with a different system where it has a uh, electrode that sticks on there. You know, that reusable electrode type system, dent pulling system. But this actually works with a stud welder gun. And the way it works is you put your stud welder uh, nails on there like you normally would, your studs. And then you put it in here and pull it with this. Uh, first time to use this, we're going to test it out and tell you how it works. Now we've got this dent on this Mustang. Kind of a funny story about this dent is uh, we, we had it parked outside of our house, at our other house, and there's a big storm that came through and uh, some trees came down and hit it right here. And there's some other things it did too, but this is one of the dents that resulted from that storm. So anyway, so we're going to pull these dents. Now before we go to pulling, you always want to take a look at your dent and not just uh, you know go right down here into the the main source of it and start pulling. If you notice every dent has highs like in here there's kind of an eyebrow kind of a crown looking area those are going to be important when you go to pulling because you're going to you're going to want to push down on those areas as you're pushing up in those and also you want to uh, spay, pay special attention to this body line you can't just push pull up on this body line either because if you'll notice it's pushing out right here so we're going to have to tap that in, hammer that in as we're pulling that out. But you're just going to raise that and you're still going to have a high area here. Now I want to show you real quick how to locate and inspect your damage. When you're looking at dents, you know, look at the lights, either the light or sunlight, either one, and it'll highlight a lot for you. Uh, if you just look, glance at the dent, you won't see all this, but you'd be surprised when you look at the lights how it will highlight the damage, the high areas, that eyebrow there. And of course you can see the low areas and it really helps highlight that and you can see exactly what's wrong and know what to do. And also down here on the bottom edge you can also see right there how that highlight shows that that body line moves out. You may notice my finger, I'm going to have to baby this hand a little bit today so I don't, you know, I don't know how well I'll do. What happened is I got that uh, slammed in a car door. Hurts quite a bit. Uh, you would think a smash finger would hurt that bad, but it, it hurts quite a bit, so you might notice some. I uh, can't do everything norm like I normally would with this hand, but uh, anyway, we're gonna work on this. We're gonna use this and let you know how it works. What you'll need is you'll need this. You'll need a stud welder gun, and again, I'm using as few tools as possible. This is something that's a uh, extra. You don't have to have this. This is just something I want to test out and show you. Uh, if you have a compressor, an air grinder would work really good. Uh, I'm still just using my cordless drill with a roll lock disc on it. And we're going to grind this area. This does has to have to be all metal to use this method because these, uh, these studs here, these studs we're using are actually welded onto the surface. So in order for that to all make contact, for the stud welder gun to make contact, it has to be metal. Now this is not the only method you, get, you could use. I'm just showing you some different methods. Uh, you could uh, drop the headliner and do some hammer and dolly and get this out. You know, or something like this. There's different methods you can use. I just like showing you a variety of ways to do it. And I want to check out this cool tool, see how it works. When grinding, you're going to want to wear your safety glasses and a dust mask. Okay, I've got most of that paint removed. There's still a few spots. I can get that out later. Uh, my battery started dying. That is the, the disadvantage about using uh, cordless drills like this is the batteries are going down. I didn't have a full charge on it when I started, but this is good enough to go ahead and get started. And then later I can get, there's just this one spot that I really need to get out. But I'm going to go ahead and start putting some nails. Now, I was talking about concentrating on, on these highs. On these dents, like I said, you don't want to go straight to the center and start working on those areas. You kind of want to start on the outside edges and work towards the center. 
But as you're doing that, you also want to concentrate on these highs. You want to push down on these high areas as you're pulling out on the lows. So we're going to do that. I'm going to put some nails on this outside ring of this, outside circle of this. And we're going to raise that up, and then we'll work towards the center. And I'm still going to need a body hammer, even though I'll use this. This tool I'm going to use the same way. This is adjustable. This I'm going to try to get on the highs. And put, while, this, while this is pushing down on the highs, I can be pulling up on the lows. So I'm going to go ahead and put some nails on there, some stud nails. some studs kind of on the outside edge and you want to hold the trigger down just for a little bit. If you hold it down too long you're going to burn a hole in this metal. If you don't hold it long enough it's just going to pull off. But what I like to do is get it on there where it's stuck and it'll hit, it'll hold but it's not welded so good where you can't get this nail off without uh, getting the head off and I'll show you that in, in just a minute. And Now this goes right over You see it's kind, of, it's kind of pushing down on the highs as it's pulling out on that. And we can also get a hammer and tap on that too here in just a minute. So it's just important to work on that crown, on that eyebrow, getting it up as it is uh, trying to raise the dent. I'm going to kind of tap on this one a little bit too. Now this is actually two separate lows, two separate dents. You got a bigger one here and a smaller one here. So you can see all this back part starting to be raised and now we can move in. Okay, I'm gonna to attempt to get these off. Like I said, that finger's kinda of messed me up a little bit, but what you wanna do is grab it right here and push down, and then you just wanna kinda of twist it. Like that, and that got the, the head off, that way you don't have all that grinding to do when you're done. So grab right at the head area, twist, So now I don't have any of those nuggets left on there. Uh, just take some light grinding. And this is even more important when you're working on newer cars where you don't want to do a lot of grinding on it because the metal's thin and it saves time. Now I'm just going to continue pulling while pushing down on the highs and up on the lows.
Now you don't want to overdo it with this. You could actually cause a dent or some damage where this is pushing out at. So you want to get the, the right amount and just don't want to go crazy with it. There's a lot of leverage right there. All right, that's starting to look good. The highs are leveling out nice. And it's got a couple of low areas in this still. And I'm going to show you something about this body line when we get to that here in just a minute. Okay, if you got air tools, a die grinder, or something like that would work good to get this paint out. We don't, so we're just going to use some 80 grit. And I'm going to have Jacob, why don't you go ahead and just sand that paint right there and right there out so we can get that stud nail to work on it. Who needs a die grinder when you got Jacob? Okay, now I've got these inner parts sanded down. We can go ahead and work on those. So I'm gonna put a couple stud nails in that area. Start raising those areas out. Now on this side, I'm not on the body line yet, but I'm gonna start working on, on this eyebrow on this high area down here. So I'm going to push up and I'm going to start knocking that in. And we're going to continue doing that when we work with the body line to move that eyebrow in as we pull the body line out. So I'm going to go ahead and tap in here a little bit. Okay, that one popped off. It wasn't stuck on there quite good enough. Moved it out some though. There's still a little bit of a low right there. We'll probably hit it a little bit more. Okay. Let's go ahead and remove those and then we're gonna concentrate on this body line. Now one thing I wanted to mention when grinding around these body lines is you gotta be careful. You can grind too much and over thin this metal. So be careful. You might grind this direction, you know, this part of the, the uh, panel here and this panel to prevent grinding over that body line. Go ahead and get those removed. Okay, so I'm gonna, and another thing, and if it makes it easier for you, you can put a piece of tape here to follow the body line to know exactly where it's at where you make that sharp, crisp line. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come up here right where the body line's at. I'm just going to follow it. That way you know you're, just, you're going to be pulling straight on the body line. Okay, I've got this tape here, but we know that the body line, is that the high area is right here and we're going to have to hammer it down. Okay, so right in here. Now I'm going to put several studs right on that body line. This, Let's probably burn the tape just a little bit. Okay, now you can see we've got three studs here on the body line. I still had this low area over here. I'm going to go ahead and remove my tape so maybe you can see it a little better. You see there's this high area right here. I'm gonna work at the, on the outside and move towards the inside. I'm gonna kinda have to position this 
to where I can get my hammer there. So I'm going to go about right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to still use this high over in this area, but I'm going to, it's kind of a tight area. may have to use this a little bit, but I'm going to knock that in as I, as I put pressure on it. So I'm going to pull up on it. And you wouldn't want to hit too hard with a hammer like this. Normally you want to use the flat of it, but it doesn't fit here, so. What this is doing is this is pushing it in and up at the same time. Okay, now I'm going to go to this other one on the outside, and I'll save that inside one for last. Come over this way. And again, I'm, I'm trying to do this, you know, get all these where you can see them good from the camera, which makes it a little more difficult too. But I'm going to pull up on this one. This is the center one, put quite a bit of pressure. I'm going to knock on this whole area lightly since I can't use the flat of the hammer. And you can see that we now have a nice crisp body line once again. So that's important. Body lines are, are your hardest area to get back, but you want to try to get those just as close as possible so you don't have to use a lot of filler on your body lines. Okay, now we're going to work on this other low area over here. I might tap that in. There. And that's feeling pretty good. Now what you want to do is we'll take all the nails off, fill of it. And there may be a low area, low area here or there you just want to pull up a little bit. I think there may be a couple here. The rest of it's feeling pretty good. It's going to take minimal filler. Now I'm going to fill of it real good. You always want to use the flat of your hand when you're doing this. Feels pretty good. There's a low area right here that I'm going to pull up and then right there. Now you got to watch it. You watch me fill of these, but I'm careful. I know this gets hot, but when, uh, this actually welds this on here, so it gets hot. So you want to be careful. It doesn't get real hot because you just have it for a second, but just something to be aware of. Thank you. 
Okay, now that feels good. Feels level. There's some minor imperfection that body filler is going to take care of, but it's not going to take much. This line's nice and sharp, so we're not going to have to build up a big, thick uh, edge with body filler. Uh, the least amount possible for your edges. The rest of this, I think recommend, recommendations are no more than a quarter of an inch after sanded's the maximum that they want, uh, the thickness of the body filler they want on here. You know, if less than that's even better. But So we'll go ahead and grind that just to smooth this up. Now I was able to get all these studs off without leaving the, the head part on there. If that gets left on there, you'll have to grind that off. But it still left little uh, weld marks. So we're going to grind that smooth. We'll go out a little bit further so we don't get our body filler on top of our paint. And then we'll get some body filler on. Now if you're still unsure, you can't really tell. You know, you're not sure if it's straight or not. And you don't know if your body line's straight. A little trick, just use something, you know, a straight edge can be a ruler. And, and if this is not perfectly straight. You can tell that this roof has a crown to it, has a bow in it, but you can kind of tell if it matches everything. Check your body line, and that looks good. Make sure this high here doesn't raise the stick off of it, and it doesn't. It's hitting a few of those little weld spots but other than that it looks good so there you have it another method when using stud welder gun another tool you can use it seemed to work pretty good like i said this is the first time i've used this i've used it with a different dent removal system and i liked it and i uh, saw this and i thought man i've got to try that so uh, you don't have to have this but this makes it easier with one hand you can you can be pushing down on the high pulling up a little of those at the same time and then you can use your hammer too in surrounding areas so you know, this comes in pretty handy. Well, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, be sure and go down below, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, and share this with your friends. Be a resource for someone else that's wanting to learn how to do uh, restoration and auto body and paint basics. In the next video, we'll show you how to apply the body filler. But that wraps it up for this video, and remember, if something's worth doing, do your best and have a blast doing it. Hey, before you go anywhere, be sure and check out some of my other videos and playlists.